own, people who not have problems not only with earning a living for themselves and who therefore fall sometimes on hard times and have to seek uh, welfare solutions in this society. So we need to have people who are able to steer them in the right direction to help them. Our community center has chosen to say that its vision, its mission, is to create institutions in which people can practice Islam as Muslims and to set an example and then from there to branch out and invite people to join in and to become Muslims along with us. We need da'is. We need to see ourselves uh, the way you would see an aircraft carrier that sits in an ocean of jahiliyyah. An aircraft carrier has everything that's needed to sustain a group of people for several months. It's like a floating city. It has doctors. It has lawyers. It has recreational directors. It has nurses. It has pharmacists. It has hospitals there. It, they have police in, 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 in there. They have firemen there. They have engineers there. They have computer technicians there. And we need to have all of those things as well because we are in effect in a sea of jahiliyyah floating on the strength of Islam. And we, like an aircraft carrier, have to send out into society sorties, they call them. Send out messages, messages to the community in which we're living, not messages of death, but messages of life, messages of the salvation that Islam offers people who will just open up their minds and accept this way of life that their creator has chosen for them. But there are many other communities that have professions. There are doctors in Saudi Arabia. There are engineers in Pakistan. There are teachers in Malaysia. But what do we have there that lets us believe that just having that makes a difference? We need to have people who are sincere. There's one thing I can leave with you is this. Brothers and sisters, communities need not only professional people. They need not only people who are educated. They need people who are sincere in their hearts people who are willing to love Allah more than they love their own families, than their own countries, than their own ethnic group or their own tribe. They have to love Allah above everything else and be willing to therefore subordinate everything else to the cause of Islam. And it's only then that we can begin to see these petty differences that divide us put aside. And the, by, by petty differences, I mean they are numerous. I had one of the largest organizations in Chicago. It is perhaps 90% Indian Pakistani and maybe 8% Arab. And the rest uh, are Americans. Very few Americans are in that organization. But there I've run across so many petty differences that divide one person from another. So many times people are unwilling to forgive when they can certainly read about it, they make Salat in line with someone, then they get up from Salat and still refuse to forgive brothers for saying something or doing something that harmed them. It's a very difficult challenge, but it's a challenge that we have to accept. If we are going to save this society, if we are going to invite people to this society, then we have to be prepared to make the sacrifices necessary to demonstrate the superiority of Islam over other ways of life. And that demonstration comes only when Islam can penetrate our own hearts. Don't assume because you were raised in a Muslim home that you are therefore a good Muslim. The home that you were raised in is not a place that you chose for yourself. The home that you were raised in is where Allah placed you. But Allah will not question you about your home. You have to purify your heart. You have to accept the personal challenge. It is just like going on Hajj, where Allah said when you go on Hajj, the best, the best provision for you to take is righteousness. It's taqwa. And we all have to be aware that Kuntum Khaira Ummat and Ukrajad and Nas Tamaruna Bil Maurufi, but Tanhauna and Munka, but took Minuna Bil Ba. They've asked me to close, and so I won't take up much time. I wanted to impress upon you the importance of realizing a couple of things, which I'll summarize. One, that the day of judgment is in front of us every day. Two, that we are living in an environment which is decaying. From the inside, the logic of the society is decaying. You see, there are no provisions in this society for the moral rights that we espouse to survive. Three, we are seeing that increasing numbers of Muslims are here, are present here, and that we have to now develop strategies to survive and to encourage other people for those who wish to save themselves to do the same thing. And four, in order for us to do that, we have to have people who are dedicated and who are sincere, people who are willing to get involved, 
people who are willing to use the talents that Allah has given them to apply them to establish Islamic institutions and to spread this message to all mankind. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Dear brothers and sisters, every year ICNA has a theme of its conventions. This year we have a theme, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger and the message. And inshallah our next speaker, Brother Hamza Yusuf, Adai, he will inshallah speak on Muhammad al Amin, the honest, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brother Hamza Yusuf. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله To speak about the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is to speak about the best of creation. Imam al Bosayri mentioned that the, the extent of our knowledge about the Prophet is that he is a human being. But of all human beings, he's the greatest of them. And I'm reminded of the words of the Prophet in describing and praising his Lord, Allahumma la nafsi. Uh, we are unable to praise you as you have praised yourself. And in the same way, we as Muslims are unable to praise the Prophet وسلم, as he has praised himself in his character. Not by his words, but in his character. In the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised his self through his creation in creating this awesome universe and this world and his mercy and his attributes and made this the place of the manifestation of Allah's attributes that this is the greatest statement of praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and like that the greatest statement of praise for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his character, it is his life itself it is what he accomplished in his lifetime it was the task that he was given the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa name is Muhammad and Muhammad is a name that means the one worthy of much praise, the praise worthy. His name in the heavens is Ahmad, which is also the most praised. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He said in the Quran, Alam nashrah laka sadra, haven't we expanded your breast? The Prophet's breast was expanded. Alam nashrah laka sadra, wa wata'ana anka wizrak, and we have taken your burden from you. And we have raised up your remembrance, your dhikr, dhikrak. The Mufassirun say that this means that the Prophet ﷺ is mentioned with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say the shahada, we say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this shahada is spoken all over the world. This statement, this witnessing is spoken all over the world. So the best of creation, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is mentioned with the Lord of creation all over the world during these various times of the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has inspired his slave to make mention of him. When we talk about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we talk about al-ameen. And al-ameen is a word which means the trustworthy. And it can have two meanings in the Arabic language because it's on the template of fa'il, which is an active and a passive sense. And the Prophet ﷺ is active and passive in his trustworthiness. He is active in the sense that nothing manifests from him except that it is trustworthy. And this is why we call him al-sadiq. He is the truthful one, the honest one. And it is passive in the sense that he is the source itself of trustworthiness and anything that emanates from him we believe and therefore he is al-masduq 
as he was described in the Sahih Hadith, Qala Sadiq al Masduq, the truthful, the one that is believed. And so Al Amin is the name that was given to him in Jahiliya. And when the brother was describing this country and the state that it's in, I, I was only reminded of the state of the Jahiliya people, the people before Islam. And the Quran talks about Al Jahiliya al Ula, the first Jahiliya. And Umar radiallahu anhu asked Ibn Abbas about the nature of this Jahiliya al Ula. Is there one after it? And Ibn Abbas said, Have you ever seen a first that didn't have a last? So we have entered into the new Jahiliya. We have entered into the Jahiliya of this century, which in many ways is compounded and more complex than the Jahiliya of those that were worshipping idols on the Arabian Peninsula when the Arabian Prophet ﷺ came to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given his gift. It is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ To these mu'minina إِذْ بَعَثَ رَسُولًا فِيهِمْ if when he sent his messenger in them, إِذْ رَسُولًا When he sent his messenger in them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ From their own selves, يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ He recites to them his ayahs, his signs, وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And he purifies them, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمَ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَذِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Even if they had been before that in a manifest error. So this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do not grace Islam by my acceptance of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has graced me by blessing me with Islam. This is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to His creation. And the Prophet sallallahu was commanded to tell them, لَا تَمُنُّوا عَلَيَّ إِسْلَامَكُمْ Don't you start telling me how, what a gift you have given me by be, your becoming a Muslim. لا تمنوا عليه إسلام بل الله يمن عليكم أن هداكم للإيمان. Allah is the gift giver that He has guided you to Iman. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was the bringer of this hidayah, this gift to creation, and He is trustworthy in that gift that He brought. That is why Allah سبحانه وتعالى says that it is a gift that He was sent to the creation because He is Al Amin. مطاع ثم أمين. He is obeyed, thamma, in the heaven, wa ameen, and he is ameen, muta'an thamma ameen, wa ma sahibukum bi majnoon. This man is not crazy. This man is not insane. This man is not a kadhab, a liar. This man is the trustworthy. He is the one that was never known to tell a lie before Islam. Before his uh, gift of nubuwa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was known never to break an oath or a trust. It is related in the... Uh, Book of the Tirmidhi, radiallahu anhu, that a man named Abdullah ibn al Hamsa, who was a, a man before who embraced Islam, but in the Jahiliya times he said, Bayatu, li Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qabla an yubayat. I sold something to the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before he was sent as a messenger. He sold him something. And he said that there was something that remained, so he told them that he would return the next day to give it to him in that place where the Prophet ﷺ was staying. And the man said that after th uh, a few days he forgot about this, and after three days he remembered. He remembered that he had made a promise with the Prophet of Allah. This is before he is a Prophet. This is before he was given the gift of a Risala. And he went back to the Prophet's place. And he found them there, the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, لَقَدْ شَقَقْتَ عَلَيَّ You've given me a difficult time. مَا فَرَقْتُ هَذَا الْمَكَانِ مُنْذُ ثَلَاثِ I haven't left this place for three days. This is his amana with people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا أَرَضْنَا إِنَّا عَرَضْنَا الْأَمَانَ عَلَى السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ فَأَبَيْنَا يَحْمَلْنَاهَا minha. We have given this, we have shown this amana, we have offered the trust to the heavens and the earth. And the heavens and the earth and the mountains, these are the great creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you a greater creation? Or is Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's heavens a greater creation than you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that this Arab that He gave to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, was the amana. This is what was shown to them, the amana. For abayna, they refused. Now this abayna is bil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
did not tell them to take the amana. This was an Arab, and they refused to take it. minha, and they found it a grievous thing to even consider taking this amana. And 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 the man, Hamra al Insan, the man took on this amana and carried this amana. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that. وَحَمَرَهَا الْإِنسَانُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا That the man took on this amana and human, human being, insan is human being in the Arabic language, took on this amana and he was ignorant in it and oppressive to his own self. This amana is the amana of the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the sharia itself is the path or the road to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the man. The Prophet sallallahu who is al-ameen and was known for this before he becomes a prophet. In the town of Mecca, when they were arguing about who should place the stone, the black stone when they had rebuilt the Kaaba. And they almost came to battle about it and finally they agreed that they should accept the first man that comes through the, into the masjid. And there comes the Prophet ﷺ at the age of 35, five years before the revelation would begin. And they said, رَضَيْنَ amin." We are content with the Ameen. We are content with the Ameen. Now they were content with the Ameen before he came to them with the truth. They were content with his akhlaq, with his character. One of the things that the Prophet ﷺ did not do was he did not speak out against their uh, idols and things like that. He did not have this taklif. He knew they were wrong, but he did not have the burhan from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ هَذِهِ السَّبِيرِ أَدْعُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَ Say that this is my way. I call to Allah عَلَى بَصِيرَ With a burhan, with a proof, with an inner sight. This only comes from the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he did not call them until the message comes. So when he came in, and then he told them each to take a handle of a cloth and he put the stone in the cloth and brought it to the place and then he himself with his noble hands placed that stone into the Kaaba and this is by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Abu Jahl knew that the Prophet sallallahu was not a liar when one of them came to him at the battle of Badr and he said Wallahi mshiduka billah I'm asking you by Allah Atarahu kadhaba Do you believe that he's lying? And he said Wallahi laysa bi kadhaab He's not a liar. When the Arabi came into the presence of the Prophet ﷺ and came out and they asked the Arabi, a Bedouin man, what do you say about this man? He said, Wallahi, laysa wajhuhu wajha kadhaab. His face is not the face of a liar. This is called firasa, of seeing with perception, sagacity. And this man recognized this was a truthful man. This is the companion of Abu Bakr Siddiq from the beginning of his childhood. And so this was the Prophet's nature. At that time on the Arabian Peninsula, with all the darknesses that they were in, there was a community of Jewish people in Yathrib. They knew in Khaybar and Yathrib that the last messenger would come to this place. They knew that from their own books. They knew that. They knew that he would come. And they had the descriptions of the Prophet ﷺ in their book. And so they went to these places and they were living there waiting for the last messenger. And when he came, a handful of them accepted him. Abdullah ibn Silam, who has great mawaqib, he has great positions. He dies defending the house of Uthman and his, the khawarij uh, stone him on the roof of the house of Uthman. He was a, a rabbinical scholar. And when the, he became Muslim, we know, all know the story. And the Jewish people came in and the, the Prophet Wasallam said, What do you say about Abdullah ibn Salam? They said, the learned of us, the son of the learned of us. And when he came out and said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah, they said, the ignoble of us, the son of the ignoble of us, vile, the son of the vile. So there were people there, there were communities. Salman al Farisi knew that the Prophet was coming because a Christian monk had told him, We know the story of Buhaira. And this is Al Amin. He is not speaking, La yantiqu an al Hawa. He doesn't speak from his own passion. He was the trustworthy one and he brought this message. Now this amana is an amana that went from the Prophet ﷺ to his Sahaba. If you look at this ayah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yatru alayhim wa ayatihi, that he recites to them their ayahs, the ayahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa yu zakkihim, wa yu'allamuhum al-kitabu wal-hikmah. These are the three stages. 
of this amana, the first stage, is to make tabligh. This is called the stage of tabligh, marhalatul tabligh, and it is embodied in this ayah by the tilawa of the ayahs. Yatru alihim ayatihi. And then from that group that becomes Muslim, from those people, yuzakihim. This is called tazkiyah, and this is called, with the ulama call this marhalatul taqween. The marhala whereby human beings are being uh, molded to become the carriers of this deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this deen through human beings, not through angels, through human beings that they would carry it from each generation to generation. The Prophet sallallahu said, إِنَّمَا يَحْمِلُ هَذَا الدِّينِ فِي كُلِّ قَرْنٍ عُدُولُهُ This deen will be carried in every generation by those just and upright people, the people of Amana, the people of Adala, the people of Sifq, and the people of Ikhlas. These are the people that will take this deen. And these are the people that must be in a process of Tazkiyah. The Prophet can use a key him. He would purify them. If somebody was strong, he would humble them. If somebody was weak, he would strengthen them. If somebody was high, he would lower them. If somebody was low, he would raise them. If somebody was wealthy, he would encourage him to give out. If somebody was poor, he would encourage him to find that way of bringing up his self-esteem so that he can live in a society with his human dignity intact. If the women were oppressed, he raised them up. If the men were oppressed, he raised them up. If people were oppressing, he brought them down. They met in a middle place. This is the teaching of Al-Amin. This is the Prophet ﷺ. And this is what he did with people. And because of that, the world became theirs. كَلِمَةٌ إِذَا قُدْتُمُوهَا تَمْرِكُونَ بِهَا الْعَرَبِ وَتَذِلُّ لَكُمْ الْعَجَمِ This is a word I'm bringing you. He told his Ashira, he told his tribe. This is a word I'm bringing you. That if you speak it, you will have dominion over the Arabs by this word La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah and the Ajam, the non-Arab will become subjugates to you they will become subjects of yours and this is the proof, the historical proof that we saw within a hundred years Islam spreads to the known corners of the earth and this teaching, this illumination illuminates mosques, masjids that become universities of centers of learning people where there was no scholarship become scholars look at the people of Khorasan Look at the people of uh, Tirmid, look at the people of Iraq, look at the people of Egypt, the people of Tunisia, the people of Mauritanian desert, Bedouins, eaters of lizards, and they become great scholars and makers of men. The word in Latin for reality means thing, rest. The word in, in, in Arabic for reality is haqiqa, it's truth. This is truth. Reality are not things, not commodities that these people produce in every age and every time. Whether idols of wood to be worshipped or whether machines to be worshipped. Do you worship what you're making with your hands and Allah has created you and that which you're doing? This is the reality of the Roman people is ras, is things, things. This is what they worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this ummah as Amr ibn Rabi, that great sahabi, when he entered into, everyone knows these stories, entered into Kisra, and he said to him, what are you bringing to us? And he said, we were sent to take people out of the worship of things, of things, to the worship of the creator of things, to take them out of rest, out of this reality, which is delusion. لا يغرنكم بالله الغرور Don't be deluded by the deluder that tells you that this world is real. يزخرف لهم يزين لهم عمالهم This is shaitan. Don't be deluded by this one that has sworn that he will take all of Bani Adam astray إلا المخلصين except the sincere ones. We have an amana in our necks. This amana is the amana of this deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this amana. And the Prophet sallallahu was ameen. And to add to it, amana ila ahliha, that you should take this amana to its people. The amana is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu gave it out. He gave it to the people of his time. And he commanded us to take it in each generation to the people who haven't heard this message. This is an amana in our necks. And we have fallen short, and I speak of myself and all of my brothers and sisters, we have fallen short of this amana. If we are Muslims, we are people of amana. The Prophet ﷺ said the sign of the munafiq is three things, and from them, tumina khan. if he's given a trust, he's treacherous, he breaks it. We have been given a trust. 
If we fail to embark and set out on taking that trust to its people, those are the ones who have not heard this message, then we have khunna Rasulullah wa khunna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been treacherous to the teaching of Allah and His Messenger. And this is a sign of nifaq in our own hearts. And so we have to break the shackles of nifaq. In the morning, when we get up, if we just say, Bismillah, or Subhanallah, or Alhamdulillah, الذي أحياني بعد أماتني وإليه النشور, any of these dua, the knot of shaitan gets broken from the neck of the son of Adam. If then he makes wudu, the second knot, and when he prays, the third knot, and he's freed from shaitan. We are all with the shaitan's knots on our necks in this age. The Muslims are carrying around the shaitan's knots because we've been asleep for a long, long time. And we have allowed people to surpass us who do are not worthy of the amana of khilafah. The amana of khilafah. And it is not by race. It is not by color. It is not by gender. It's not by any of these things. It's by knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the khilafah. Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ He taught Adam asma, the nature of things, the nature of reality to perceive the musammayat, the qualities. And so this is the amana that we have. And if we are to follow the messenger, and the sign of our love of Allah is what? قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتِّبِعُونِي If you say that you love Allah, then follow me. The love of the messenger of Allah is the love of Allah. وَمَنْ أَطَعَ الرَّسُولِ وَمَنْ يُطِعَ الرَّسُولُ فَقَدْ أَطَعَ اللَّهِ The one that obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. This is the love of Allah, isn't following the messenger. That is how love of Allah manifests in our lives. And if that love is not there, then we fall short. Where are we? Where are we? So let us take on this amana of Al-Ameen, of the trustworthy one that left us this. Let us take on this amana that we took the oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to carry it. Let us take this deen to those who haven't heard it. But let us begin with our own homes. Let us make our homes Darul Islam. If our homes are not Darul Islam, then what are we going to call people to? فَاقِدُ شَيْءٌ لَا يَعْطِيهِ Someone that has nothing cannot give anything. If we are people of Islam, then let us be people of Islam. If we are people of sleep, then let us continue sleeping. But I say we're not. We're people of Islam. And Islam is waking up. And nasu niyamu. People are asleep. فَإِذَا مَاتُوا انْتِبَهُ And when they die, they wake up. In the hadith of Sahih Muslim, I've got my two-minute sign right here. <laughs> when they die, I'm not being rude. <laughs> when they die, when people die, they wake up. So the Prophet ﷺ said, حَاسِبُ قَبْلَ أَنْ تُحَاسَبُ Be people of يوم الحساب before you die. Be people of Qiyamah today. Let us take ourselves into account. Kunu shuhada ala nas. Be shuhada all over humanity, but first, be shuhada walo ala anfusikum, even if it's upon your own self. So let us look each one of us into our own situation, what we can change, what we can rectify, what we need to do to become people of this grave amana, this amana. And as we watch these people destroy the earth, sit by. What are we going to say on Yawm Qiyamah to our Lord? What are we going to say when Allah says, Are we going to say, Kunna mustad'afina fit ab? We were weak in the earth, and the angels reply, Was on Allah's earth vast that you might to have your rufiha? In other words, did you exhaust all of the possibilities? Did you exhaust all of the alternatives? Did you do these things? This is what we have to ask ourselves. Aqulu qawriha wa astaghfir Allah li wa rakum. What he said in Muslimin, I I'm going to apologize for Ihsan and myself because we were on a flight all night last night, and um, the only reason I do that is because if you find any faults, take that into consideration. <laughs> and the other thing, uh, I wondered why you chose this place, uh, Bloomsburg. Is it Bloomsburg? Bloomsburg. And then we understood when we came in. It's the only town in Pennsylvania, so it's easy to find. <laughs> no, I'm not.